Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. On today's show, we're going to be discussing a pretty big hire in Reggie McKenzie, two possible quarterback options in Derek Carr and Josh Rosen. So if you like that, hopefully you guys stick around and don't forget to check out the channel where we post uh, this podcast each and every single Sunday. So uh, this first news story comes from Pro Football Rumors. The Dolphins to hire Reggie McKenzie. Former uh, Raiders manager Reggie McKenzie. Oh, sorry, my mic. Apologize. Uh, former Reggie, or excuse me, former Raiders general manager Reggie McKenzie will resurface as a member of the Dolphins front office. The Dolphins plan to hire McKenzie as a senior personnel executive. Adam Beasley of the Miami Herald reports. McKenzie has not been contacted with any teams since being fired from his Raiders post. He served as Oakland's GM for seven years, though the final season saw the Raiders strip much of his powers and give personnel control to John Gruden. McKenzie will join a revamped Dolphins front office. GM Chris Greer now has more decision-making making authority than he did under the previous uh, regime. With uh, the franchise... Uh, Excuse me. With the franchise demoting Mike Tannenbaum, the former vice, brand, uh, vice football president of operations uh, is not expected to be with the Dolphins after the draft. Mike Tannenbaum is not expected to be with the Dolphins. Former Bill Scout Marvin Allen is now serving as Greer's right hand man. McKenzie will join the mix in advance of an interesting season. Notorious for big spending and free agency, the Dolphins are expected to tamp tamper down their March investment this year. The team is plotting a rebuild that may or may not be based on landing the best position to secure a top quarterback in 2020. Uh, inheriting a Raiders team with significant issues in 2012, McKenzie participated in a similar teardown in his last role. Gruden gutted much of McKenzie's roster last year, but the Raiders significantly aided by McKenzie's impact in 2014 uh, in the 2014 draft and some big free agent deals did go 12-4 in 2016 to snap their playoff drought. McKenzie earned Executive of the Year acclaim for overseeing that 2016 turnaround. The Dolphins have not... Okay, we don't need to... Just stating how long it's been since the Dolphins won a playoff game. It's been since 2000. We don't, we don't, we, 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 we don't need to go down that road right now. So what is my opinion on this uh, Reggie McKenzie hire? Um, I'll just give you... I was going to say I'll start with the positive and get into the, into the you know maybe some of the stuff that he didn't do great in Oakland. But when you look at what he did in Oakland, he inherited a, a franchise that was so dysfunctional. I mean, so dysfunctional, dude. Uh, it's still really, it's still pretty dang dysfunctional. I mean, when you look at, I mean, he would, why was he even there? They should have fired him before John Gruden even got there, but they let him hang around, which was just sad. And then they proceeded to gut his work that he uh, the team that he had been trying to build for seven years, uh, that's just, I mean, it's its pretty messed up uh, if you think about it. So you really have to take into account the organization he was working under, the owner that he was working under in Mark Davis. It's not all peaches and cream down there in Oakland. It's very dysfunctional. It's even more dysfunctional than Miami's uh, for, uh organization has been over the last 15 years if that it, it, i'm not that's not a joke that's not exaggerating that's just facts i mean they might as well have been an aa uh an a uh an aaf team could have been competitive with, with them in like 2013 uh or 2012 whenever they went one in 15 i think is what they went uh they were terrible dude they were so bad um but when you look at what reggie was able to do despite the shortcomings of the organization that he inherited, and despite the chaos that was that roster for, you know, a good two years, and then Reggie completely turned it around with that 2014 draft, drafting Khalil Mack, drafting Derek Carr, the next year getting Amari Cooper, really building the foundation, signing Clutchio Simile, Donald Penn, Rodney Houston, uh, to deals Reggie Nelson, which was a big part of that defense. That was a very opportunistic defense. It wasn't very good, but it was pretty good at getting turnovers in 2016 then so then he wins executive of the year for the turnaround going 12 and 4 Derek Carr breaks his leg uh they don't think okay you know obviously the season is over I think who was it Matt McLoin was in there as the as the as the backup at the time they lose in the in the wild card round to the Houston Texans um so everybody pretty much is like well this is a this is gonna they're gonna compete with the Patriots for years to come they went 12 and 4 they looked really good. The foundation is really nice. You got Coop on the outside. You have Derek under center. Uh, and then you have Khalil Mack rushing the passer. Uh, you know, bright future for the Raiders. 
great offensive line, one of the more physical offensive lines in the National Football League, second to only at the time to the Dallas Cowboys. Then you go into the next year. Jack Del Rio, Jack Del Rio returns as head coach. They can, they fire their offensive coordinator for who the heck fires their offensive coordinator after twelve and four season? Seriously, that's crazy. Completely changed the scheme. It's more of a zone finesse team now. They they're passing it more. Uh, they're they're less of a balanced physical football team than they were a year ago. It's really fit that offensive line, and that's the reason Reggie McKenzie uh, did what he did to bring those guys in. Completely changed the scheme. It messes pretty much everything up, and they have a very, I think they what, what, they went 6-10 and 10 the next year, or maybe it was, uh, it was something. It was like 6-10, 8-8 eight eight or something like that. Super disappointing season. I mean, a lot of people thought they were going to at least compete, or at least go to the AFC Championship game. Some people will pick them to go to the Super Bowl. A lot of hype around that football team obviously just didn't last, and they weren't able to ever repeat that success. So a lot of things were going on. It wasn't necessarily, it definitely wasn't the personnel because you can't just go 12-4 and four and then the next year do that much worse unless there's some drastic changes somewhere. Obviously with the scheme, uh, that was probably the biggest change that they had. So, I mean, you can really look at it one of two ways. You can say Reggie was dealing, he built the team, he did his job to the point where he went executive year, the team went 12-4, he, he built the foundation of that team, and basically two drafts. You could look at it the other way, where you look at his draft record and his draft his, history, it's very, it's non, it's not very consistent. Uh, that's probably the, the blemish on his uh, personnel career. It's, it's not very deep, it's not very consistent. Uh, so, but you could also say, well, he drafted, you know, two all-pro players, um, uh, three basically, three All Pro players built a twelve and four football team uh, that could definitely would have won a playoff game for sure. Would have beat the Houston Texans uh, if Derek Carr didn't break his leg. Then stuff that he that was out of his hands happened the next two years. The next year they completely changed the scheme. Doesn't fit the roster. The year after that, uh, they fire the Jack Del Rio, hire John Gruden to take Reggie McKenzie's job. Um, and he was just basically standing around doing nothing. I mean, it's whatever, however you want to look at that, because that's what he was dealing with. I mean, he was dealing with a very dysfunctional organization. So I, f- I feel like it's important to paint that picture. But he's very respected around the league, obviously one executive of the year, uh, well respected around the league, and it's going to be nice to have someone like him in the room as a voice uh, that has had that had that m- amount of success in such a short span of time. I think it's a great hire, uh, and I think it makes our personnel department stronger, and it gives it, them more experience and talent as well. So I, I love the hire. Uh, I, I, I love it. It's going to be very interesting because we have a new story coming up. What he thinks about Derek Carr, because obviously he can be very honest. He's not tied t- to the hip of this guy anymore. Um, for various different reasons. I mean, he was a sec, you know, he's Derek Carr. He was, he's the second round pick, all this other stuff, $100 million contract, all that other stuff. He doesn't have to really, uh, he, he could be very, uh, objective about it, uh, you know, and really give his true feelings about, about Derek Carr. And if that trade ever was floated the Dolphins' way, it's nice to have him in that room to come on it, to come down on a decision. Uh, and we'll get into that news story. Actually, it's a good segue. Because that's the next news story. Should the Raiders trade for Dolphins cornerback Xavier Howard? Uh, let's see here. Okay, here we go. In Oakland's case, it could help a lot in the cornerback room, which bodes just one promising player in Gary on Conley. As such, ESPN uh, brought up a possible trade scenario on Friday that would involve the Raiders sending the 24th the 24th overall pick to the Miami Dolphins in exchange for Xavier Howard, or another scenario where the Raiders send Derek Carr uh, in exchange for Xavier Howard and some draft picks. Um, now, they're later on, I think, uh, more later on picks, and I guess they would take Kyler Murray in that scenario or whatever, and that's a huge rumor that the the, the Raiders are looking, uh, that's been floated around a lot, that the Raiders are looking to trade Derek Carr. Uh, 
So if you're the Dolphins in that situation, what do you value more? An extra f- a 24th first-round pick, and then it really depends on the people in the room and how they view Derek Carr. In my opinion, I love Derek Carr. I think he's a very, very good quarterback. I think he's a franchise quarterback. I um, mean, he's been dealing with utter dysfunction in Oakland, um, but I think he's a franchise guy. He led a team to 12-4 and record, could have won some playoff games, made some noise in the playoffs, unfortunately, obviously broke his leg uh, in that December game against the, was it the Colts or... I can't remember. I think it was the Colts. Um, but I love him. I think he's a good... I mean, even with the roster that he had... I mean, think about it. He's had one good roster uh, and coaching staff one season out of his entire career. Other than that, it's been very mediocre um, and not very good, uh, especially the roster. If you look at the roster itself, it's not been... You know, It's either been in a rebuilding state or completely gutted. Um, so... I like Derek Carr a lot. I think he's a gunslinger, very quick release. I think he's accurate. Uh, you know, he was dealing with a lot in that season, new system. Um, uh, you know, he had some turnover issues the, at the very beginning of the season, but I feel like he played a lot better as he got acclimated to the system. Um, and it would have been interesting to see if all the pieces stayed around him, like Cooper, Martavius, uh, Jared Cook, a tight end, Marshawn stayed healthy, the offensive line stayed healthy, which it didn't. What that offense was able to do, because they were very good the first month of the year or the first month of the season, they're actually pretty decent, uh, despite having a, not a very good roster. So, I, I I like Derek Carr a lot. It really depends on how you view him as a player uh, and how you value him as a player, which is very interesting because Reggie McKenzie is now in that in that personnel room, in that war room, and he'll have a say uh, as well. So if that ever does float in the Dolphins' way, it'd be very interesting to see how that one goes down. But I would be very happy to have him number four on our team. I like him a lot. I always have. All right. Uh... This this is next new story is very interesting as well. Uh, it's another quarterback scenario for the Dolphins that you might not have thought of. Is there a chance that Josh Romer, Josh Josh Roman Josh Rosen, former first round pick for the Arizona Cardinals, could be traded to the Miami Dolphins? Probably not. But hear me out for a bit. Now this has been flo- this has been he's been a lot of people think he's going to New England. Some people think he can come to Miami. So really take your pick. But it is a huge rumor that the Cardinals have put him on the block. The rumors of Rosen being traded first started when Texas, uh, former Texas head coach, uh, Texas Tech coach, took the, uh, the coaching job for the Cardinals. Why then, back in October, when Kingsbury was still a coach at the collegiate level, he said that he, if given the chance, he'd take Murray with the first overall pick. Again, this was before he had uh, any intention of being an NFL head coach, especially for the Cards. So why would he trade what's probably the uh, the main building block to the franchise? Let's face it, Rosen didn't have the best year as he finished his rookie season with 11 touchdowns and 14 interceptions to go along with 2,000 yards passing. Keep in mind, he started 13 games as the... Uh, as the rest was by Sam Bradford. However, people should shouldn't expect uh, first round pick quarterbacks to explode. Uh, Rosen seems like the type of player uh, that he will get better as time passes. The one thing uh, draft analysts raved about Rosen was his intellect, which comes rare in a lot of quarterbacks. With Murray now fully committing to the game of football, excuse me, this could possibly. Uh, this could be a possibility, and I emphasize possibility, make uh, Kingsbury interested. Could possibly make Kingsbury interested. Got the burps right now, I gotta get away from the mic. When dealing with Kingsbury, it's going to take time for Rosen to get adjusted to the Big 12 spread offense since he attended UCLA, which is why Kingsbury and Murray could be a match uh, made in heaven. Murray played for what uh, what is the king of the Big 12 in Oklahoma, so where it could possibly be a smooth transition with Lincoln Riley as the head coach for OU. Murray excelled in what was a Heisman winning season. So... When you think about it like that, it's very interesting. Uh, Josh Rosen, the reason he didn't have a good rookie rookie season is because this, I mean, the team, again, the same thing with Derek Carr, the team sucked. They made a terrible decision on defense to switch from a 3-4 to a 4-3. They were really good on defense the year before. Magically, that all disappeared the next year because of the schematic change. They just didn't fit the personnel. Same thing with what happened to the Raiders. 
Offensively, I mean, that offensive line, even when Bruce Arians was there, was terrible. Even when they went on that magical run, it was average at best as an offensive line. Uh, when they went to the NFC Championship game, they got blown out by the Panthers. So they haven't had an offensive line down there in a very long time. And this particular season, it was atrocious. It was terrible. You're drafting a not only a rookie quarterback, but one that is a pocket passer. Of course it's not going to work. So I don't look at that as a negative. I love Josh Rosen, even when he was coming out of the draft. I, to be honest with you, if he fell to the Dolphins at what, one or two more spots, would they have taken him? Who the heck knows, dude? It could have possibly have, it, it, that could have legitimately happened. I mean, it was rumored for a long time that Adam Gates loved Josh Rosen. And then there was an article written about Josh Rosen that Adam didn't really. But then he said to, I think it was Joe Buck and Troy Aikman at one point, or maybe it was some other team, that, you know, there was a lot of quarterbacks they like, including Josh Rosen. It was very weird. I don't know. I don't know what was the smoke screen and what wasn't. But there was, I mean, after the interview that we had with Josh Rosen, which he did visit the team facility, apparently, I mean, Adam Gase was raving about him. And apparently, and the, the article said that he was watching hours of film. Um, and it was very, it was heavily rumored that he would have been a Dolphin. That's not a joke. I mean, you go back, it was, it was, it was, uh, I mean, it, there, there could have been a legitimate possibility if he did fall that he would be a Dolphin. Uh, and let's get into some of the positives of his game. If you haven't watched the show that Peyton Manning does on ESPN, it's called Detail. It's a very good show. You can pretty much find it on YouTube. I don't know if that's supposed to happen. Probably not. Uh, who knows if ESPN has taken it down. But you can go watch a video. I think it was uploaded to the National Football League um, YouTube channel. Uh, it was him looking at Josh Rosen's game uh, and how smart he is for a rookie quarterback. Uh, some of the things he was doing uh, at the line of scrimmage in terms of audibling and stuff like that and really highlighting uh, how he is beyond his years uh, in that department of his game, which is very important because his play style, you need to be that way as a quarterback. If you're not, then you're not going to be very successful. And I think Josh Rosen, if you look at some of the big plays that he did make his rookie season and some of the throws he made, I mean, they're beautiful. They're, they're beautiful, hard. I mean, some of those throws that he made are ridiculous. And believe it or not, a lot of his bigger plays, at least, were made either on the run. I mean, he had to run for his life all the time. He, he scrambled a lot. Uh, he has the athleticism to be a, a very, very good quarterback in terms of moving around and evading pressure in the pocket. Uh, and he can definitely do bootlegs and stuff of that nature uh, as well. So he's not just a statue back there. I like him a lot. Um, a lot. Uh, there's The only question marks with him were his leadership and his, and his personality. You really, I mean, nobody complained in Arizona. Larry Fitzgerald loved him uh, down there in uh, in Arizona. So I don't, I don't think that's an issue. I, it's, not, it's not like Jay Cutler. You don't hear things about teammates not liking him and stuff of that nature. So I love Josh Rosen. Um, I really do. I think he can be a very good quarterback in this league. He has all the tools to do that. Um, so if if that f- was floated our way, now what would we have to give up for him? I don't know. That's a great question. Uh, some have reported that it's pennies on the dollar. It's peanuts. Maybe like a second to third round pick, which isn't peanuts. That's that's a pretty big deal. Uh, but it's not a first round pick. So if you could get in for a second or a third, I would pull that trigger right now, dude. Uh, you know, I, absolutely. I mean, Peyton Manning's rookie season, very similar playing style in terms of pocket passer, very intellectual, has... People forget Peyton Manning had like a 45-yard touchdown, rushing touchdown against the Oakland Raiders. He was pretty mobile. I think Josh is a lot more athletic than Peyton was, but you get what I'm saying. Very similar playing styles. Um, the, Peyton obviously had a very, very bad rookie here. Set their uh, uh, rookie interception record with 29. Um, so it doesn't – that doesn't mean any – the rookie year is what it is, but – as long as you see what he can be, and I, and I think you saw that a lot on what he could be. I mean, he beat Green Bay in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers on the other side. You know, he, he put up close games against Seattle. Uh, he, he I think he's he's a very underrated quarterback. And if he was drafted to another team like a Baltimore or uh, 
who else? Cleveland or something like that. I think he would have. He still would have had success, a lot more success. Uh, and in, and whoever was drafting to Arizona, I feel like would have had the same amount of success that he did there because it's very hard as a rookie to elevate the elevate a franchise like that. It's very difficult to do, especially with a franchise that has. I mean, I can't think of one rookie who had, who did do that and had and went to you know had a had a good year uh, statistically and. Uh, and winning games. I mean, Andrew Luck, I guess, but that team was pretty good. They just needed a quarterback. So, um, I I can't really think of one. Uh, Russell Wilson already had a very good team in place. Um, RG three had a pretty solid squad. Um, I'm sure. I mean, Dan had a good offense. I mean, defensively, were was terrible, and that was his second season in the league. So, um, yeah, I mean. It, I, it's, it's it, what I'm saying is, 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 is really dumb to be like, yeah, he, he didn't have a good rookie season with that team and that franchise, and say he's a bust. So if the Cardinals want to be really stupid and trade him to us, hallelujah. Um, this new story is kind of crazy, and actually stupid but it's interesting nfl trade rumors miami dolphins among betting favorites for antonio brown people loved uh to include the miami dolphins in player transactions it seems like a go-to move to throw the dolphins who have been big spenders in free agency the past in the past and therefore could be seen as the team that drives up the price of the next big name free agent on the market but so this this new story is miami Dolphins. yeah we already said that uh among favorites to get antonio brown According to BetOnline.ag Sportsbook, the Dolphins. What a stupid fan, stupid website. Dolphins are among the odds on fa- uh, odds on favorites to land Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver Antonio Brown. According to their bookmakers, the Arizona Cardinals are the favorites to have Brown in Week One of the 2019 season. Uh, let's see what the Dolphins' odds are. Where are the Dolphins? Maybe I already read it and just completely just. Whatever. I would elim- I would Im- I would immediately eliminate the Browns and Ravens, given it unlikely the Steelers would trade Brown to a, their team in their own division, meaning that they would have to face him twice a season. It is interesting that twelve of the teams listed, all, all four AFC East teams, are represented. Brown, a Miami native, makes a ton of sense. The Dolphins, who need a number one receiver to complement Kenny Stills, Albert Wilson, Jakeem Grant, and Danny Mandola, with Miami looking to rebuild and not chase one year. Uh, Chase one year immediate success, though I really cannot see a way they would enter into serious trade talks. I really don't see them spending draft picks, and the trade will likely include high picks to get a player that the, when the Dolphins recognize they have holes on the roster and need to use the draft to correct themselves. Of course, that will not stop people from bringing up an, a, the Dolphins as a landing spot for Antonio Brown. Now, there was another story that... Well, because Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown said they wanted to go to Miami and all this stuff. Like, oh, we, we could bring Miami back. And they said stuff, stupid stuff like that. And then there was another one that the Odell Beckham could possibly go to the Dolphins as well. I think there was a tweet or something Odell had sent. I don't know. But it was, it was just stupid. Now, in this current regime, that's not happening. Not a chance. Not a chance. They already said that we're, they're not going to do that. Let's, let's go back to Adam Gase's regime, which was, I mean... Literally, the only good coach on that staff with that was Adam and Darren, Darren Rizzi. Those were the only two capable guys, in my opinion, and in, in the entire organization at the time. And Chris Greer, who really didn't get a chance to shine in very small moments, uh, he did, uh, and he's drafted pretty well. But um, what the heck was that? Oh yeah. So if we look at the previous regime and let's say all of this stuff was circulating, dude, yeah, that probably would happen. With you know, definitely Antonio Brown and, and Le'Veon Bell. We would have went hard at and maybe even Odell I don't know what you would have had to give up for all three of those guys but it would definitely be a, a, the farm and the castle and the, the you would have to sell the country for God's sakes to get to get those three guys uh, not to mention pay all three of them but it definitely would have been something that 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 organization at that time would have pursued uh, and would it have been fun to see Le'Veon Bell and you know Odell Beckham and Antonio Brown, I mean, yeah, dude, that would have been uh, um, so fun to watch. But <clears throat> that's not the regime we we currently currently are residing in. And I don't think that that doesn't that that might win you or at least get you 
you know, 10 plus games, you might go to the Super Bowl, might have an AFC championship uh, appearance, but does that um, get you long term success? No. Uh, would it work with the Dolphins? Let's just say you got Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. No. I mean, they have been problems in their locker room and in, and in the organization. One of them is making rap albums, the other one's like doing reality TV and, and is on American Idol and all this other stuff and is more you know, concerned about his own fame, what the heck do you think they're going to do in Miami, of all places? Like, it would be a total train wreck. It would not work. Uh, They would be more focused on the city life, you know, whatever the heck contracts we would have given them. They they wouldn't have cared about winning at all. So, or the team, the organization, the you know, the logo on their helmet, none of that stuff. They they would have been more concerned about themselves. Um, so I don't even then I don't think it would have worked. Would have been cool to see, yeah, dude. That would have been pretty pretty dope to see it. Um, those those guys play together on the same team. But would it have worked? There's a good chance it might not have. Again, that's in some alternate alternate dimension where Adam Gase didn't get fired and my Tana mom didn't get fired. This next news story comes from. Um, what is this? Oh, the Finsider. What does Joe Flacco trade mean for Ryan Tannehill and Miami Dolphins? The Miami, Def- the Miami Dolphins are expected to move on from quarterback Ryan Tannehill this offseason with early rumors that the team is looking for a trade partner but will release their 2012 first-round pick if they cannot find a trade. This week, the Denver Broncos and Baltimore Ravens agreed to trade, uh, agreed to a trade that will... Weird way to end that sentence. When trades become permitted on March 13th, with the start of the new league year, send quarterback Joe Flacco from Baltimore to, Bron- to the Broncos, does that move impact Tannehill's trade value or what he will find when he hits the open market? Tannehill will turn 31 uh, as soon as the 2019 season begins. Flacco just turned 34. That should mean Tannehill has more of a market than Flacco. Just based on the age of each player, the Broncos are not looking for a long-term answer at the quarterback position. With Flacco making sense, Tannehill could be a multi-year starter for a team, despite many Dolphins fans wanting to cut him out of South Florida. Tannehill is still a quality NFL starter. He's just not a a pick-up-a-team-and-carry-them type of player. He needs an offensive line that can protect him, and he needs wide receivers who can get great separation and make people miss once they have the ball. He's starting to have injury concerns, though his knee seems healthy now, and the shoulder injury he sustained last year was uh, was on a play where his arm was wrenched backward just as he threw the ball not timing of a hit through uh, that happens routinely there is a place for him as a starting quarterback in this league so how does it impact the whole market for Tannehill and what the heck will happen to Tannehill and and how that affects the Dolphins I don't think it it does very 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 much Um, I don't think we're going to be able to trade him. I mean, early, months before any of this happened, during the season, there was an executive in the NFL that said, no one's going to trade for him because they know that they're going to cut him anyway. So, there you go. And nobody wants to inherit that contract either. So, why wouldn't they just wait? That's what he said. So, I mean, yeah. there's There's no way, no way, that let's let's see the quarterback needy teams. Denver, they're not gonna do it. They just got Joe Flacco. Uh, Jacksonville, they're not gonna do it. They're probably gonna go after Kyler Murray or maybe try to just take a stab at Dwayne Haskins, or maybe you'd sign Teddy Bridgewater. So who does that really leave? You know what I mean? No one, really. Uh, I'm trying to think. Maybe Washington. They take that's the only team I could see making a trade for him or just signing him and waiting for him to get cut. That's the, to me to be honest with you the only team. So, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy how one season makes such so much of a difference uh, in, a, in an organization and in, in, in a player's career. Uh, it's it's it's, an, it's unbelievable. But he will be um, for sure he will not be a dolphin. Um, there's no way. All right, this last news story comes from Fansided. The top five offensive needs in 2019 for the Miami Dolphins. 
uh, fortify the interior of the defense. Back in 2015, the Miami Dolphins gave big money to the two defensive tackle and Dominic Seal. The steady defender brought quite the resume to South Florida and played and started in every game with the franchise for three seasons. With standout pass rushers such as Cameron Wake, Olivier Vernon, and Mario Williams on the outside, during his stay, the Finns had enormous potential when it came to harassing opposing quarterbacks. But the interior uh, defender, uh, but the intense defender wasn't surrounded with a top uh, with a lot of help. Elsewhere, especially up the middle, Miami Dolphins' defense was ranked 28th, 30th, and 14th, respectively, in the league against the run. Sue, I don't remember when we went and finished 14th with Sue, but okay. Sue was released by the team last offseason, and turnaround only the Arizona Cardinals allowed more rushing yards per game than the Finns. With new defensive-minded head coach Brian Flores at the controls, fixing the front seven is certainly on the team's list of priorities. I would agree with that, and I've... <clears throat> There's so many really good interior D linemen that are going to be free agents that would be super cheap that I think we would be fools not to take advantage of that. Number four, offensive need for the Dolphins. Upgrade the offensive line. Regardless of who lines up under center, as well who is uh, situated in the backfield, the Miami Dolphins have had trouble running the football and protecting their quarterback in recent seasons. Dating back to 2011, the team has surrendered 45 or more sacks in the past four out of the uh, eight seasons. Over that span, the defense, defense finished in the league, league's top 10, rushing just once, which was 2016, the club's only playoff appearance in the last eight years. It's not as if the team has not used a share of high draft picks to shore up that this area, and last season, the club did sign well-respected guard Josh Sitton and traded for center Daniel Kilgore, but both would uh, wound up, uh, excuse me, both would uh, wound up seeing their first season in South Florida cut very short by injury. Uh, the latter's main fill-in was Travis Swanson, who made 11 starts but struggled mightily when it came to pass blocking. In retrospective, perhaps the club made a big mistake last offseason in cutting ties with veteran center Mike Pouncey, regardless of the reasons he would have uh, been a big upgrade. Yeah, 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 we know, we know, we know, we know. Um, <clears throat> I don't agree with that. I mean, Mike Pouncey had a lot of injury issues when he was a Dolphin, so I don't think that would have helped anything. Um, Josh Sitton, I mean, dude, the interior is where it needs to be fixed. It's not the tackles. We were actually, I, you know, some statistic, statistic, uh, based website or whatever the heck it was. We were one of the best pass blocking teams in the league, uh, that year. So most of the years that Adam was there, so, um. Our tackles are good, it's just the interior is terrible. And that's where we, literally the majority of our sacks came from, was up the middle. And we saw what the Colts did. I mean, they just fixed their, they fixed their interior with Ryan Kelly and obviously um, uh, Quentin Nelson and completely changed it, everything. Number three, more help at running back. This I can I couldn't disagree with this more. Uh, he wasn't on the field for the entire season, but there was little doubt that the impact that running back Frank Gore made in his first season with the Miami Dolphins. He was he would miss the final two games of the season, but he totaled up team high carries with 156 and rushing wait in carries with 156 carries and rushing yards 200 or excuse me 722. But the ageless performer wasn't really part of the passing attack, despite the fact. Uh, his only touchdown of the season came on a reception. Will he be back for 15th NFL season? Both he and Brandon Bolden are slated for for free agency, excuse me, free agency next month. What was the touchdown that he caught? I don't remember that. The real playmaker out of the Miami Dolphins backfield was third-year pro Kenny Drake, who finished the season uh, the season on the club in rushing yards with 535 and receptions 53, while leading the team in total yards from scrimmage a thousand. And touchdowns nine. Combined with Kalen Balaj, new head coach Brian Flores, and offensive coordinator Chad O'Shea, certainly have some talent to work with in the backfield. But could depth be an issue? If Gore and Bolden are not resigned, could the organization look elsewhere to add a little insurance? What the heck? No, dude. We have two very good running backs in Kenyon Drake and Kalen Balaj. Brandon Bolden, pretty good third guy and special teams player. So, no, we do not need help at the running back position. Number two, address the pass rush. Cameron Wake has been one of the premier pass rushers in the league since entering the NFL in 2009. The one-time Penn State uh, Nittany Lion in undrafted free agent has played in a total of 146 regular season contests and wrapped up an impressive 98 sacks and 22 forced fumbles. The five-time Pro Bowler and one-time All-Pro has collected 10 more quarterback traps in five of his 10 uh, seasons. 
in the league. In 2015, the relentless defender rolled up seven sacks in the first seven outings before being lost for the season with a torn Achilles. Wake rebounded with a vengeance the next two seasons, amassing a combined 22 sacks and 32 outings from 2016 to 2017. But a season ago, despite 14 games and starts, he dropped opposing single college just six times and managed only 36 ta- tackles at 37 years old. Could the best days be behind the former standout? Uh, it was one time Rams first round pick Robert Quinn who led the team in sacks with six and a half sacks. Wake can also become an unrestricted free agent on March 13th. Miami's inability to stop the run, 31st in the NFL, made life easier for offenses that control the football and not have to put their quarterbacks in harm's way more than um, more than necessary. Hence, only three teams in the league total fewer sacks than the Dolphins, 31 and 18. There could be a slew of pass rushing solutions in free agency next month. Will the team look for the answer there? Um... Yeah, this is a this is a big issue, dude. But it's interesting how the Dolphins thought they were going to be playing with the lead all of the time with the offense that we had. I mean, seriously, dude. And not only that, but the, to be great on defense, you have to be really good on first and second down. Third down, to me, um, is a lot easier to defend, especially if it's a third and long, than a first and second down, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, just the whole thought process was just so stupid with Mike Tannenbaum and Adam Gase. In terms of, we're going to be playing with the lead, apparently. So let's get to all about, it's just a bunch of pass rushers. What happens when your offense is got off on like 28th in the league? What happens then? Oh, oh, that, oh, you take L's? Oh. Number one need. Settle on a starting quarterback. Oh, oh, we're getting some fuzz. We're getting some fuzz input. Sorry, I don't know what I did. Uh, he was the 8th overall pick in 2012, and for the first four seasons of his NFL career, quarterback Grant Tannehill didn't miss a game. In fact, he started every contest for the club over that span. And while his numbers as a rookie were a bit uneven, there was steady improvement over the years as the one-time Texas a and wide receiver learned to be a pro quarterback. But in Week 14 of, the, of 2016, in an eventual home win over the Arizona Cardinals, Tannehill injured his knee and was lost for the remainder of the season and the playoffs. The same knee injury would eventually wind up uh, resurfacing in 2017, and once the once promising quarterback missed the entire year. As for the team, uh, then head coach Adam Gase coaxed Jake, Jake Cutler out of retirement, but it wasn't the ideal solution, and the team finished 6-10. and The past season, the Dolphins got off to quite a start, winning their first three games of the season, but the club warts began to show. As the year wore on, Tannehill would once again not play a full season. Uh, this time, Brock Osweiler f- f- filling in for five games, uh, and now the team appears at the moment ready to move on from the former first-round pick. Where uh, where will the answer come from? Could the club get lucky and find their long-term solution behind the center with the 13th overall pick? Could there be a trade down uh, down the road for someone like Denver's Case Keenum? Is there a reliable option for agency? The Dolphins have a big question to answer within the few next few months. No duh. Yeah, that's a big problem. Um, where, okay, if I had to bet money, if I had to bet money, who, the, and I'm saying the long-term solution, if the Dolphins do attempt to get one this year, who will it be? It will be, it will be in a trade. I'm calling it now. It will be in a trade. Either It will either be Derek Carr or Josh Rosen. I'm calling it now. Call in now. First prediction I've... I want to say this is the first prediction I've ever made on this channel. So yeah, dude, we're calling it. Okay? It's going to be a trade. Uh, it's either going to be Josh Rosen or Derek Carr. Now, now, some people say, hey, Skaggs, 1383. Right? Um, what, uh, what about what you said about Nick Foles? That's a win-now move. But now you're saying you would trade for Josh Rosen or Derek Carr. And you bring up a very good, good contradiction. But it's not a contradiction. Number one, Derek Carr, Josh Rosen, younger. Two, I both I think both of them are franchise quarterbacks, and I do not think Nick Foles is that. So, especially Josh Rosen. I mean, that's basically like just taking him in the first round, in my in my opinion. You might not even have to take you might not even have to use that much 
on him. You know what I'm saying? So it's a completely different scenario than giving. <clears throat> Because now Nick Foles is apparently going to be traded before it was free agency when they sign him. So it's a little bit different now. So that's why it's different. Both of them, I have faith that they're both franchise quarterbacks. Both of them are younger. I think Derek Carr, I don't know how old Derek Carr is. I want to say he's 27. Uh, I think Josh is like 22, 23, 21. So it's a completely different dynamic between like a 31-year-old Nick Foles. Um, So, yeah. There you go. That's the difference. It's not a contradiction. But yeah, if, if the Dolphins do get their long, like, oh, this is our franchise guy, it's going to be in a trade. I don't see them. And I really hope, listen, you guys know how I feel about Kyler Murray. Okay, I love him. I think he's a great, I think he's going to be very good. I think um, he's got one heck of an arm. I think he's got unbelievable uh, creativity and instincts in terms of making plays when it's not there. Uh, so, yeah, there's that, but I don't think the Dolphins are going to get their hands on him. I think there's a lot of NFL teams that are going to want him, um, including Jacksonville, maybe Oakland, or, and or Las Vegas now, um, or uh, Arizona. And maybe even Cincinnati. A lot of people forget about that. I think there are sleepers for Kyler Murray, to be honest with you. All right, let's get into the fan Q&A where we answer fans' questions. I unfortunately uploaded this pretty late, so we're not going to have a lot of questions here. Um, I think we only have 11, and most of them are from my guy, uh, Corporate Gamer, which there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, But let's get into the fans' questions. Uh, And that's on me. This one's on me, guys. Uh, Jonathan asks, Would you consider signing Trey Flowers and Teddy Bridgewater if we get a quarterback this draft so we can develop him in a winning culture? And they're both relatively young. What do you think? Uh, Trey Flowers and Teddy Bridgewater? Uh, Depending off, I don't know if Teddy, I couldn't say for a fact that he's a franchise quarterback, so that would be the only problem with Teddy. But Trey Flowers, I think, is going to just cost too much money. Corporate Gamer says, um, he asks, uh, I think we... I think we got a better chance to get either Locke or Murray now that Denver got Flacco. Thoughts? No. Uh, maybe Locke, but if that's something that you want to do. But I don't think you're going to get a better chance for Murray. I think Dwayne, I think Kyler Murray is going to be a lot more uh, highly coveted than a lot of people think, um, especially after the whole draft combine interviews stuff, you know, pro days or, excuse me, uh, uh, exclusive workouts within the organization, stuff like that. I think it's going to change a lot of minds um, with him being too short. And stuff like that. some people say, he's, some people have met him in person. Like if you watch the Dan Patrick show, say he's either the same height as Russell Wilson or barely an inch shorter. So there you go. Um, I think it's going to change a lot of minds, and I think there's not a chance that the, unless. We make some kind of sick move to get him. I don't think the Dolphins are getting Kyler Murray. Drew Locke, obviously, Daniel Jones. Those are more likely than uh, Kyler Murray. I don't think... Uh, Daniel Jones, I've been... I think I've kind of stepped off the wagon, if I'm being honest with you guys. Um, Drew Locke, I think he has potential. But, yeah. Corporate Gamer asks, I see Arizona is going to release Robert in... in uh, I, I, I can't See, and, and Dick, I can say his name, but I. And Dick. And Dick. Uh, very hard name to pronounce for me, guys. He might be a low, a good low risk pickup. Yeah, maybe. There's better interior players, though. J Rose asks. Uh, this next question comes to J Rose. He says, "Who do you think the new? Co- uh, excuse me. Who do you think the new coaches will cut after evaluating their roster?" The bus stops here, boys. The gravy train has stopped. Okay? Enough of these old veterans who can't do anything anymore that other teams have cut. And that we think, oh, they're going to you know, do the same thing they did with the other organization when come in to find out, nope. Uh, I, okay, here's just... These are, like, in stone, and this will definitely happen. I think Tannehill's going to be gone. Josh Sitton gone. Daniel Kilgore gone. Daniel Mandola gone. Andre Branch, gone. Robert Quinn, gone. I think those five are... Lock them up. If you're a betting man, go ahead and bet. Because I think for sure those five are gone. Um, 
number one, Robert Quinn and Andre Branch cannot set the edge. The only thing they can they can do at a half decent level, and they really can't even do this consistently, is rush the passer or be a pass rush specialist. But they're a one dimensional defender, and that doesn't fit this defense because it's going to be multiple. They're gone, uh, so they're gone. Um, uh, Justin, I think, is an obvious one. Danny Amendola, I think, is a maybe not as obvious, but I think it's for sure going to happen. Uh, some other guys at it. There's some other people. Um, DP, I don't think he's coming back. Um, I don't think that's a set in stone one though. But I wouldn't. I don't. I don't expect him to be back. Um, I'm. De- I'm definitely forgetting people. Uh, I'm trying to think. In terms of people who are going to be free agents, who are just going to be cut. I. Uh, TJ McDonald, I think he's going to be cut. Um, because if you look at the safeties that New England had, and that's the people that Brian Flores coached, they're they're multiple. They can cover. They can play in the box. Um, they can do a lot of different things. You know, they 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 cover a lot of ground. I don't think T.J. McDonald is that safety. I think at best he's a linebacker. Um, so I, I I would not be surprised if uh, he was cut. Uh, so yeah, those are the guys that I, I you know the gravy train is definitely stopped for some of those guys. I'm sure they'll find teams elsewhere, but they just do not fit what we're trying to do as an organization currently. And good lord, it's so disappointing, dude. How disappointing was Robert Quinn? Seriously. I mean, he had such a good preseason. Granted, it was preseason. No team was doing anything special. I don't even think they were trying to game plan for him. Uh, but, dude, wow. Dude, I, the defense in general is just so sad. It was so sad under Adam Gase. I mean, whoa, you know, the di- we, what we look like against the worst, statistically, the worst offense in football. If it wasn't for the Bills playing with playing against us, they would be so bad. They would be so far in the cellar. Uh, but, for, you know, for some reason we can't even you know, be disciplined enough to, to stop a semi-mobile quarterback, for God's sakes. And that's not, that's not just Josh Allen. That's been, you know, we can go down the list of, of Colin Kaepernick when we played him. He ran all over us. Tyrod Taylor. Um, who else, dude? I mean, Lamar Jackson in preseason, um, which, I mean, obviously really doesn't count. Cam Newton. Uh, who else, dude? All, any Anybody with half-decent mobile ability we have struggled against. This ne- that was a good question, though, Jay. This next question comes from Pete. He says, uh, do you think Miami should target Corey Legion and free agency defensive tackles from Los Angeles? Yeah, I know uh, Corey is. Uh, uh, he gets injured a lot, um, so I would say no. And I think he's going to command, maybe since the injury history is bad, he might not command as much money. But there are players that do what he does. Maybe he's not, not as good of a pass rusher and, and more of less than an, less situational guys, but I still feel like you can get what you really want. Uh, out of some of the other guys, like like a Danny Shelton, Malcolm Brown, uh, Gary, Grady Jarrett's the only big name guy that I would actually go after in terms of an interior player. Uh, who else? Uh, Morgan Moses, I think is his name, or it's, it's different. I, Morgan Marcus Hunt or Morgus Hunt for the guy from Baltimore or Brett Urban. That's his name. It's not even the guy I'm thinking about. Brett Urban. Uh, he he's a great player, or for what he does, he's a very good player. Those are all very cheap interior defenders that, we, that you wouldn't have to spend a ton of money on. That can stay healthy as well. Uh, Corporate Gamer says, uh, he asks, would you sign cornerback Trevor Williams to play the second cornerback? He's very underrated. He's had some injury issues as well. Um, no, I mean, not really. I mean, no. Uh, he's not... He's not... He's a good corner, but... Um, I don't think he's... I think he's... Uh, yeah, I mean, it would be a good signing. I do agree with you, Corporate Gamer. I, I think it would be a very good signing, but maybe you go in a different direction. Um, but maybe you're right. Maybe you go with Trevor Williams. Because the Patriots have been known to get DBs from free agency. You know, so maybe you go with Trevor, you go with Steven, but I, I, yeah, I, I think that's that's a good one. Uh, Matthew N asks. He says, "Why did Miami get Reggie McKenzie? It was just to add uh, some somebody who's had a lot of su- a lot of success in the league, very well respected throughout the, the throughout the league. Um, really, an experienced voice again, who's had a lot of success can't hurt you." 
Corporate Mini Gamer asks, uh, could Vincent Taylor play DVDN in a 3-4? Oh, man. No, I, I don't think so. Maybe, but I, I don't think so. Corporate Gamer says, what would our linebackers look like in a 3-4? That's a great question. Diff, totally different. I don't know where Jerome Baker fits. Uh, he's not big enough to be... Maybe in a situational... Because we're going to switch from a 4-3 to a 3-4. So maybe on third down he could do it. But uh, like if we're in a 3-4 all three downs, I don't think he could do it. But since we're going to be multiple, I think he fits there. But you're going to have to have some some somebody on the outside that... You can switch between the 4-3 and the 3-4, who's physical, who's has the edge, and who's good against the run. And would you rather just have Jerome... Is he phys- is Jerome f- I think he's physical enough to be that middle linebacker at that position, especially since the league now is a lot. It's just, you know, people have described it as basketball and grass. Uh, so I think it's, it's a lot easier to put Jerome in that, si- in that position uh, with maybe with you, you have Raekwon and, 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 uh, and, 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 and um, uh, Jerome in the middle there, or and then you have your two outside guys, or something like that. But I, I could still see fitting Jerome and Raekwon. Where Kiko lies, I don't know. He might not even be a dolphin. This next question comes from Emmanuel. He says, How did you become a Dolphins fan? How did I become a Dolphins fan? Um, I think I've, I've explained this before, but. Um, I don't know why I said I've explained this before. Uh, like I'm Jack Black or something who who is just who's everybody should hear, you know, know about me. Uh, I don't know why I said that, but uh, so how I became a Dolphins fan um, through my family really. It was just uh, family. My uncle, uh, other family members. My mom's side of the family lives in Florida. Um, so, just growing up in that environment, uh, that's why I became a Dolphins fan. Um, yeah, so it's basically like any other family. I mean, there's other Dolphins fans like in New York, and so those people, though, grew up watching, their families grew up watching Dan Reno. There, uh, there are a lot of people that don't live in Florida that are Dolphins fans, though. Um, a lot, actually. You'd be, we would be all very, very surprised, um who don't live in Florida that are Dolphins. Like, you know, people in New York, there's a lot of people in, you know, like the Indianapolis area, the the Kentucky area. Uh, uh, I don't know about Chicago, like the, the, the Ohio area. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, but Tennessee, uh, Virginia, um, you know, Carolina areas, stuff like that. There's, there's a good amount of Dolphins fans in, in, in that region. Texas. Uh, there's some Dolphins fans, uh, so we're very uh, we travel well. Cali, there's a lot. Of, there's good. There's a good. There's a good amount. Um, so yeah, any south like southern region area, a lot of Dolphins fans in that and in, in, in there. Uh, so we travel well. I don't know why I brought that up, but uh, yeah, but that's how I became a Dolphins. It was just family, basically. Um, and, yeah. Now I'm the I uh, out of the family in my family, uh, I am the only. Uh, I would say I'm the definitely the biggest football fan. I'm definitely uh, the only real guy left standing in terms of being a Dolphins fan. I mean, um, really, to be honest with you, uh, my uncle kind of he fell out of it and back into it. Um, He's more of a baseball fan than he's a football fan. He's a huge Dodgers fan. Um, my brother is an Dolphins fan. Uh, my dad and my mom. My mom's a Dolphins fan, but she's she's not like she's not into it. She she watches the games on Sunday um, sometimes, but she's more of a she loves she likes the Dolphins, uh, but she doesn't she's not invested as much. She's not invested, I guess I could say, you should say. Dad doesn't really care about football. He more more along the lines of a he likes college football, uh, basketball. Um, so, yeah, I'm really the only one left here uh, who's an actual, like, diehard. I, like, I've just, let's just put it this I've taken to the Dolphins more than my entire family, really. Um, I just love football, love the game, um, always have. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. 
and really, this three, and I've said this before, that's why I've started this channel. I just really don't have a lot of people to talk about the Dolphins with in, in my life. And really, no one, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people, especially my my brother, with just useless information that they don't care about. And so this is really my only outlet to connect and to talk at the, at the level like the, at the level that I talk about the Dolphins with. Because you can't just go up to your your friends or some people who just don't care like they don't care dude you know you can't really you can really you can't you can't do that so this is a good outlet for that this is a good to to, to release my thoughts and my you know the energy on that um is this is a good outlet for that so that's why i started this pot the, the really this is the reason i started this channel uh and doing this is just again to have that, that outlet but the, the, this video is this this chain of videos really help, helps that, um, and it's really fun, dude. It's really fun. I recommend it to anybody out there who who who's a Dolphins fan. I know we have a lot on this channel. Uh, it's fun to do. It's 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 cool. To, it's fun. It's cool. Uh, it's nice to see the support uh, there. So let's get back to talking Dolphins before I let you guys go. This quarterback situation, dude. I, I to be honest with you, if if I'm if I'm being honest, um. I really want this to be figured out this year. If I if I, I I hope and I and I look to the stars and just in hoping that we get, we find the guy this year. Not that we take a guy this year that we find him this year. I don't have to, do I want to deal with a 2019 season that is just poor quarterback play? No, dude. We've dealt with it for over for over 20 years now uh, and it, it's getting it's getting ridiculous at this point. So um you know it, it's ridiculous dude we, we need a franchise quarterback i mean really if you were if you were born even in the 2000 let's say the year 2000 uh we're in the, the late 90s really um to mid to late 90s you really you've grown up watching tom brady brett Favre, aaron Rodgers, uh kurt warner um the mannings um who else uh, big ben um Steve McNair at times, uh, when when he was in his prime, you've grown uh, Russell Wilson now. Um, to, 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 in terms of today's guys, Cam Newton, um, you've really just watched all these other teams draft and take these guys that you your teams passed passed up on and, and have them. Uh, I mean, having a quarterback, a franchise quarterback, to me is the most important thing in the league. If your franchise doesn't have that, you're just in the basement. If you have that. It makes the games more exciting. Uh, even if you're not a Super Bowl contender and you're just going into the playoffs or you're, you're winning more than they get. Tony Romo is another one that we watched, but it's easy. It, it's, it's just it's just a lot better to have that guy um, and not be searching for him every single year. And to be honest with you, the Dolphins are the weirdest ones. If you look at the Cleveland Browns, you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, you look at the Tennessee Titans, you look at some of these guys that have just went through quarterbacks like paper um, or toilet paper. Uh, you we're the only ones that really have been stingy about it. The, the, Tannehill was the third quarterback we've ever taken in the first round. The other two were Bob Greasy and Dan Marino. Bob Greasy was at the start of the franchise even being a thing. Dan Marino was years later, and obviously we know how that turned out. Then think about that. So Dan was taken, not then ta- jumps to Tannehill. That's the, that's the next time we took one. It's crazy, dude. So it's weird. We're the only team in the league that has had quarterback problems, but for some reason doesn't want to fix it, you know, or at least try to fix it um, at a high level. I mean, Matt Ryan, uh, you know, you think about some of the guys that have been taken that we could have taken. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is the biggest, probably the biggest one. Tom Brady, people throw that out. out. Yeah, Tom Brady, I think really the stars align for him in terms of that. I don't think he would have been as successful. Definitely would not have been as successful with us, but, or maybe he wouldn't even have been a um, – who knows, man? Who really knows? But I'm talking about people who can who can elevate a, a franchise. We think about Big Ben. Uh, we, which I don't think we could have taken Big Ben. I could have been wrong. I could be wrong about that. But uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, is the, probably the worst one. Drew Brees is another one that we could have uh, signed to a deal. Russell Wilson, um, that's a big one. So yeah, it's just weird when you look at all the other teams that have failed to find one. For some reason, we're the only ones that 
have not found one, but have really not tried hard enough to find one. Very weird, but that is going to be it, guys. I am SkyXJ83, and that's from that's through different regimes too, guys. That's not through the same owners, the same different owners, different uh, coaches, different GMs. Very weird. Uh, so I'm SkyXJ83. I uh, hope you guys to see you guys in the next one. Unfortunately, should have uploaded the fan Q and A earlier in the week, so we could have gotten more questions. But that won't happen again. I I'm going to be on my P's and Q's this next time around. So I'll see you guys in the next one.